What's going on, cryptocurrency universe? It's the Bitcoin miner here, guys. Well, it's me and Kyle over here, and um, we are troubleshooting a machine that died on us, and I thought I would make a quick video showing you how we troubleshoot a machine, the processes we take to determine what's wrong and how to fix it. Obviously, it's not a software issue. Uh, it's definitely a hardware issue. So this is what happens when we turn the machine on. We have to click the little power button here. So we get a head fake. It does come on. We get some fans turning. And oh, we unplug the uh, graphics cards. The graphics cards also got powered on and started turning up as well. So. I thought that this was either a, a dead uh, board or possibly bad RAM or something else even. So the st first thing we did was we unplugged all of our USBs and we started with just one. Then we tried the same step by unplugging all of the USBs and just plugging and powering on the board which we can try again. And we're still getting the same results. This is actually a very tricky one because we are getting some power, but there's something that's not allowing it to boot up and continue to go. So this would lead me to believe bad RAM or bad CPU or bad board. In the past, I have tested the board, I've tested the CPUs, and I've only found one bad RAM, never found a bad CPU, out of hundreds, thousands of pieces of sticks of RAM. So I'm leaning towards the board. So we actually just went ahead and changed the board, went ahead and put all of this back together, and we have the exact same results we had earlier prior to changing out the board. So the board is not the problem. Then we tried replacing the RAM. There were there was two sticks of RAM in this initially. We pulled one, tried, same thing. Switched them around, tried, same thing. We tried a new sticker RAM, same thing. So therefore we have determined that it is not a RAM problem. Our next bet would be to pull the CPU again since we just replaced the board and reinstall it. Um, but at the same time, we wanna be able to test the CPU and see if it's actually, that's what's bad or not. So before we get to the CPU and we already know the board is new, we need to check the power supply. But at the same time, the power supply seems to be working. We're getting power, uh, fans are turning on, it's just not continuing. So this would lead me to believe that's a board. Well, the easiest way to test your power supply and to see if it's potentially the power supply is to hook up a device such as a fan or something that would run continuously. You can use a jumper like this or you can actually jump these two pins so you can see in the picture the two pins that are right there available on what side you can jump those two pins and turn the power supply on entirely once you turn that power supply on entirely by using a jumper like this okay Kyle go ahead and put the jumper on so that we can show them now there we go we put the jumper on and the back fans just kicked on full speed so yeah it looks like the power supply is good but wait a minute it's not so the power supply is turning on and dying off for a few minutes so we're gonna go ahead and replace the power supply in this unit and I'm pretty much sure that that is the culprit in this instance as I said before this was a very very tricky rig to diagnose short of rebuilding the thing entirely uh, checking every single riser you would never think that it would possibly be the power supply. This is actually the first bad power supply I have ever seen go bad from EVGA. The good thing is it's got a 10 year warranty. If it does turn out to be the power supply when we replace it, uh, they'll easily fix it and replace it for us. This is the beauty and the advantage of paying for a nice power supply instead of a traditional uh, server power supply that'll cost you half the price, but they only last maybe a year to two years before you have to replace them. 
As you saw in my other videos, I have rigs that are running these EVGA power supplies at max wattage for four years continuously without any problems. I swear by these things, guys. EVGA power supply, 1600 T2s are the ones. But enough about that. Let's change it and see if we can actually fix this rig. Gotta love this custom case design, though. It is very easy to replace a power supply. We can do it in just a couple of minutes. Unplug everything real quick. Four screws in the front. Plug everything back in. Power supply replaced. All right, guys, we got everything switched over. Now is, oh, there we go. The moment of truth. It was the power supply, amazingly enough. Wow. I have seen hundreds, thousands of these power supplies. This is the first one that's ever actually gone out. EVGA T2 for the win, guys. Unfortunately, it was one bad one. It's eventually going to happen, but it was strange. It wasn't completely dead. It powered some and didn't completely power otherwise. Anyways, good thing is we'll just send it back and uh, get a warranty for it. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Remember to thumb, love, uh, thumbs up the video if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. I'll try to do better next time. Hopefully you guys will be seeing more of me. Talk to you later.